This is the next lesson um, on the differentiation chapter in the Year 13 Pure Textbook. So it's looking at section 9.4, where we're going to look at using the product rule. And the product rule, again, is very useful because it enables us to differentiate the product of two separate functions. So before we have a look at that, we're just going to have a quick um, look at where this sits within our scheme of lessons. So we're gradually working our way through it. As I said, we'll get to here before the summer holidays um, and then we'll pick up this um, other stuff um, in September. So what we're going to do before we look at the product rule is we're just going to have a quick recap of the chain rule. So what I'd like you to do just to make sure you've understood the chain rule, which if you did all of the questions that I set from last lesson, then you should be fine with it. OK, but what happens is within the product rule where we're differentiating a product of two separate functions, quite often within that one or maybe both of the functions will require you to use a chain rule as well. So you do need to be quite good at the chain rules. So I'd say pause this now and have a go at those. Right, if you're back now then. So here's my y equals cos. Remember what we were thinking with the chain rule. We were always thinking, what is the bit that would be u? So this would be my u here. So I did encourage you to see if you can do these without separately writing down what u is. OK, so what you want to think about is the highest level function is y equals cos of u or cos of something. What does cos go to? Cos differentiates to minus sign. But remember, it's minus sign of u or it's minus sign of the same argument. You do not change the argument. Big time sign. Here's the chain rule coming in. You then times by du dx. So that's going to be the differential of the argument. If I differentiate 2x squared, I get 4x. And then I might just write my answer by putting the 4x at the front. OK. And putting my sign at the end there. Right. So really, really important with these trig functions, do not change this argument when you differentiate. OK, this next one. And do you remember these? Examiners seem to like these. Remember, that was the same as saying sine x all cubed. So what we've got here is we're going to make use of the chain rule to do something raised to a power. So it's going to be u cubed. So hopefully when you had a go at these, what you did was something raised to a power, bring down the power, reduce the power by one. I can write it in a bracket if I want, or I can just say, right, bring down the power of the three. That would be sine x all squared. So I can write it like that. Big time sign. Don't forget with the chain rule times by du dx. What do I get if I differentiate sine x? That's right. I get cos x. So just tidy it, write it all together. It doesn't matter which order you write them in. Just get rid of the time sign. OK, there we go. Right, final one here. Again, it's something else raised to a power. So what my u is going to be is my bit in my bracket. OK, what do you notice that's different about this one? When you wrote it down, did you notice? It's x equals a function of y. So remember what we did when we did some like these, rather than doing dy dx, we did dx dy. OK, so let's use our chain rule on this. Something raised to a power, bring down the power, reduce the power by one. That's what I always say in my head. Big time sign, chain rule times by du d, well, it will be du dy this time, but times by the differential what's in the bracket. If I differentiate that, what do I get? 6y. So just putting it all together, I get 30y times 3y squared plus 9 to the 4. Now, do make sure you answer the question. This is what the question wanted. It wanted dy dx. It didn't want dx dy. But we know from our last lesson, dy dx is 1 over dx dy. So I can just write that as 1 over all of that and just leave it like that. OK, write it carefully. Thank you. You're nice and accurate with those. OK, so quick recap of the chain rule. If you did struggle with those, do make sure you've done that exercise that I set for last lesson. I know I didn't say to hand it in, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to do it because you do. OK, 
Right, next slide. This is going to show you what the product rule looks like. Okay, so the product rule enables us to differentiate the product of two functions. Hopefully you realize product means times. So here's what the rule looks like. Okay, so if y is the product of two functions, u and v, both of those would be functions of x, then dy dx is u times dv dx plus v times du dx. Okay, and u and v are functions of x. This is not given to you as in a formula. Now, it's not a particularly difficult one to remember. So what you need to remember when you're differentiating a product is it's made up of leaving one of the functions the same times by the differential of the other one. And then it's got a plus in the middle, so it doesn't matter which way around these are. The second one is made up of leaving the other function the same and differentiating the first one. OK, so what I'm going to do is show you some good working to write down to make sure that you don't make mistakes in these. When you've done more of them, you may be able to do them a little bit more in your head without writing down so much. But to certainly to start with, show you working. We're going to show what u is. We're going to show what v is and we're going to show their differentials and then we're going to plug them into the formula. OK, so here's example number one. If you would like to write that down for me then. Now, this is a show that. OK, you can see the differential there is um, in quite a tidy form. So what we'll find with this one is once we've done our product rule, we'll end up with something plus something. And then we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra to get it looking like that. So what we're going to do first, then here's our function. OK, so it's made up of u times v. So let's nice and clearly write down what u is. So u is x squared. OK, so du dx, because I'm going to need that for my formula, differentiate that. What do I get? 2x. OK, so that's u. v. V is equal to, just to make it a little bit easier to differentiate, I'm going to write it as the power of a half. So notice for V, we're going to be using the chain rule there as part of the product rule. So it's something raised to a power. OK, I know we normally call that thing U. OK, but it's U sort of within the chain rule rather than within the product rule. So in some respects, I think that's why, why when you're doing the chain rule, it's better if you don't have to specifically write out u because you can get a little bit confused as to what your u is referring to if you're using it within the product rule. OK, so remember what I do, something to a power. I bring down the power. I leave the bracket the same. I reduce the power by one. Times sign. What do I times by? I times by the differential of the thing in the bracket. So I times by a three. So let's just tidy this up a bit. OK, three is going to go on the top. Two is going to go on the bottom. I'm going to write this as a square root minus a half. So it means it's in the denominator. That's going to look like that. OK. All right. OK, let's use our product rule. So dy dx is equal to. So what I do is I'm going to do u dv dx plus v du dx. So especially when you're first starting to use it, write out which bits you're going to be using. OK, so u I'm going to write down. And I'm going to times it by dv dx. So pick out the right bit. That's this bit. 3 over 2 root 3x plus 1. Yes, minus 1, sorry. Plus v. Now I'm going to write the v back in a square root because we're going to tidy it in a minute. v times du dx. So can you appreciate here where writing all of these four things specifically down helps you to pick the right bit to put into your formula? OK, so I'm just going to times those terms together. So what am I going to get? 3x squared on the top, 2 root 3x minus 1 on the bottom of that one, plus 2x 
times root 3x minus 1. Now, here's a really important point that I'd like to make. You don't want to do extra work if you don't have to. If this question was not to show that, if the question just said, find, oh, look, I shouldn't have put dy dx, should I? I should have put f dash x. If the question just said, find f dash x, this would be a perfectly good answer of where we've got to here. The only reason we're going to do this extra manipulation is because it's a show that. So if it doesn't say to write it in a particular form, you can just leave it like that. You don't need to factorise it. You don't need to combine it together unless the question tells you to. OK, we need to, though, because it's told us to. Right. So look at the thing we're trying to show up here. It's a single fraction. So what I'm going to need to do is take both of these and put them over a common denominator. OK, hopefully you can see by peeking at the show that as well, that's going to be a really good common denominator. OK, so here's the bit where you need to be quite good at fractions. This 3x squared is already over that. OK, this term isn't already over that. So I must times it by it. OK, you're happy with that? You know, if you put something in a fraction that isn't already over that denominator, you must times it by that denominator. OK, let's just tidy a bit then what we've got on the top here. The denominator is going to stay like that. Right, look at what we've got in the second bit here. OK, we've got a 2x and a 2, so we've got a 4x. Now, what happens when we times root 3x minus 1 by root 3x minus 1? We get just 3x minus 1. OK, which simplifies that. What I'm going to do now is expand out these brackets and, and collect my stuff together. I've got 3x squared plus 12x squared, so I'm going to get 15x squared. I've got a minus 4x over that denominator. And if you have a look at what the show that is, I'm almost there. What have they done? They've just taken out a factor of x. And I have got exactly what I need. So that means show that's a nice in that you, um, if you do get that, it means you've not made any mistakes as long as your working's all nice and clear. If you don't quite get that, then you can just go back and find your mistake. OK, so just to say again, if the question didn't say to write it in a particular form, you can leave it like that. And you'll see it on the mark schemes like that. So especially if you're going to go go on and then use it to find a gradient or something like that. Don't waste your time simplifying it. OK, that's number one done. Number two. So if you want to write this one down. So here's my function. You can see it's a product of two separate functions, both of which that are quite complicated. OK, and both of which will actually use the chain rule to differentiate them. So you can see a lot small practice of the chain rule. Now, it doesn't matter which way around you do u and v. It really doesn't. I'll just generally do the first thing as u. OK, just generally what I do. And then the second thing is v. OK, so let's differentiate that. Remember what you get if you differentiate that? e to the 4x always goes to e to the 4x. But remember, by the chain rule, because this is your u, you get a times by 4. OK, right, the second bit. I'm going to write it like this. Remember, when we've got the little squared up next to the sign, it's the same as writing it like that. So we've got something raised to a power. So do you remember your chain rule again? dv dx is bring down the power, reduce the power by one, so that's just going to be times to the power one. Big times sign, times by du dx. OK, so again, sine x, sine 3x goes to cos 3x, but we get the extra three at the beginning by using the chain rule within the chain rule. OK, quite complicated that one. But we've got this extra 3 because it's a 3x. Notice when I've differentiated, though, same argument. Do not change it. OK, let's just put those together then. 6 sine 3x cos 3x. OK, so let's get my product rule formula. dy dx is equal to 
u dv dx plus v du dx. Okay, so let's write down our u e to the 4x. Let's write down my dv dx, sine 3x cos 3x, plus, let's write down my v, and you can see again, because I've written them out really nice and clearly, I can make sure I pick out the right bits, okay, for e to the 4x. Okay. Right, so let's just tidy those terms a little bit. I'll put my 6 at the front. I'll put my e to the 4x at the front. And then I've got sine 3x cos 3x. And again, I'll put my 4 at the front. I'll put my e to the 4x at the front. And I've got sine squared 3x. Now, the question wants me to write it in a particular form. Can you see what they've taken out? and factorised up here, they've taken out those two bits. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take out, okay, an e to the 4x, and I'm going to take out a sine 3x. Okay, so what does that leave me with in my bracket? That leaves me with a 6 cos 3x plus 4 sine 3x. Okay, so that looks like the form that they wanted in the question. Make the examiner's life easy. State what your A and B are. A is the number of cos 3x's and B is the number of sine 3x's. Okay, so it looks exactly like that. If you state those, then that's nice and clear for him that you can see you've got it in exactly the right form. Okay, right. One more for you then. This one here. Okay. Applications of differentiation, again, will come into these questions, whether you're using the, the chain rule, whether you're using the product rule, things like finding turning points, things like finding equations of tangents and normals, things like finding the gradient. They'll all come into these sorts of questions. OK, so here's my curve I'm dealing with. So you can again see it's a product of two functions doesn't matter which way round, but if I say u equals e to the 2x, what's the u dx? That's right, e to the 2x stays the same, but because of the chain rule, I get the 2 at the beginning. Okay, v equals cos x, that's a nice straightforward one, as long as you remember, cos goes to minus sine. Okay. So I've got all of those written out for me. So when I do my dy dx, remember u dv dx plus v du dx. And if you write that out and sub them in, and even if you muck up a little bit later, you're still going to get the marks for using the product rule. Okay, so e to the 2x times minus sine x plus cos x times 2e to the 2x. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy those a little bit. So minus e to the 2x sine x plus 2e to the 2x cos x. Right, what was the question asking for? Turning points. Do you remember what the, what's the situation at turning points? That's right, the gradient is zero. Okay, so I'm going to factor out the e to the 2x's, okay? I get minus sine x plus 2 cos x, okay? Now, think about the e to the x graph, what it looks like. Do you remember when we did exponentials and logs? It looks like that, okay? So e to the x is always positive, it's never zero. So I can just put a line like through that and say it's never equal to zero. So this bracket is what I'm solving here. So I'm solving 2 cos x equals sine x. Or if I divide both sides by cos x, I get tan x equals 2. And that's what the question was asking me for, OK? Right, part B. So equations of tangents and normals. That's your part A there. Find an equation of the tangent to C at the point where x equals zero. So remember, equations of tangents, we're going to need the gradient where x is zero. 
So I'm not going to need to differentiate again because I've got my function up here. OK, make sure you use the one before you cancel out the e. So this is the one we're using. So dy dx, I'm going to put x is 0, so minus e to the 0 sine 0 plus 2e to the 0 cos of 0. OK, so sine of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1, so that's equal to 2. So that tells me the gradient when x is 0 is 2. Remember your formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I've got my x coordinate. I also need my y coordinate when x is 0. So I'm going to pop it back into my equation of my curve here. So y equals e to the 0 cos 0. And that's 1. OK, so I'm now ready to do my equation of my tangent. Do always read the questions carefully. They sometimes ask for a tangent. They sometimes ask for normals. Y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Oh, let's just tidy up a bit. y equals 2x plus 1. OK, so those are applications of um, using the product rule in the same way as they are when you do any form of differentiation. I think what the important thing for these questions is write out for each of the questions, write out what u is, write out what du dx is, write out what v is, write out what dv dx is, and write out the product rule formula. OK, if you do that every time, you are less likely to make mistakes. And you can see these questions are worth quite a few marks. So you definitely have time to do that. OK, right over to you then. So these are the questions for you to do. So I've just emphasized here at the same, you know, saying make sure you state what U and V are and then state the product rule formula. So I would like some of these submitted. I would like seven, eight, nine, ten submitted. Um, as the assignment on Teams. I will set that up for you. OK, so if you can get that done and submit it by the deadline that I state on Teams, then that would be great. OK, thank you very much. If there was anything you didn't understand, then please do just rewind and go and watch it again. OK, thank you.